There we go. Go ahead and call Podge back. If you don't mind. A little bit late getting in. A little bit late getting in. Podge, we're calling you back. If you're watching the stream, hold on, brother. We're calling you back right now. Right now. We're calling you back. Bear with me, Punch. You folks, hold on. We we had him logged in to us. We had him call in. We're actually we actually got a little bit of home time tonight. Um, the uh, Punch, what's going on, brother? We're live right now, Punch. I finally got the stream to work. Apologize, brother. So you want to set that back close? Let's do okay, a quick no let's do a quick countdown for last night. By the way, the, the, shout out to the Wolverine, best team driver in the whole wide world. Probably your team driver, but. Michigan. Who do you root for, Punch? I just think. <laughs> Problem tonight. And the Beagle, the Beagle, he's crashed out behind us. But we uh, we had a pickup today. We were supposed to pick up about an hour from here and head to the northwest, northwest. And uh, the uh, pickup oh, today. Sorry. We were supposed to yeah, about like that. There we have buttons by me. I told you about this. And then, uh, no, no, no football. No, no football. The president carries. Um, people say it's loaded today. Come back tomorrow around. We're an hour from the house. Let's shoot to the house. Get some showers. Get some wash done. And I, are you still there? I'm here. All right. Something up on the screen. I reached out. To this one. This one. And he's a and he's a, a current slash video. 17 years as a Leo, and I wanted to get him on the channel because last night's lot sucky. It was bad. Uh, a lot, even though my stream looked fine when I was filming it, a lot of wah, wah, wah dialogue. And I'm a firm believer on my channel. I'm a firm believer that we need to we learn how to communicate with theater because when you bring your block out here to this business. It can get you in trouble now, Ponch. If you can do me a favor, man, give the give the. Uh, well, I, I don't have I don't even have sound or have right now, but do a favor if you would, Ponch. Give them about what you're about. Uh, basically, I moved out to California in '91 for the military. Spent ten years as a lowlifter in the Air Force. Then got out. Uh, stayed in California, became a uh, officer out here with the big department on the highway. Yep. And um, stayed with them for years until they, uh, after on the motorcycle for 11 years. Um, and they basically, I had three surgeries on my elbows. And they said, your percentage is too high. Either you retire or at a this lower rate, 50%, or take the higher rate and you know, in four years, resign now and take, but you can't come back to work because you're 62% disabled, which I'm not disabled at all, but that's what the doctors say. Yeah, and we're going to discuss, we're going to, we're going to get to that in just one second, but let me ask you this too, man. You blew over your, your former Air Force, um, so I appreciate the service. You and I both have that, have that in common. When you chose to go into the highway patrol, what was your, what was your reasoning there? What was your plan there when you got into the highway patrol back then? Basically, it was, um, Time, and it was hardest to get into, and I had applied for four other agencies that I got into. The other one put me on hold, and the highway patrol was just harder. And it's basically out here, it's, it's basically cream of the crop. You kind of you know, that's what you shoot for. And knowing that I can go anywhere in the state and you know ride a motorcycle, drive a car, ride a horse, ride a bicycle, anything, right? Get an airplane, get a helicopter, anything, go undercover. That just appealed, that appealed to me. Right. So, Right now, now you were doing real well too. I don't, I don't want to get in your business, but you were making over a hundred thousand dollars as a highway guy in the cap. Yeah, actually, when I left in my last day of work, August 9th, um, I was at one hundred forty-five thousand. That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. Now let me ask you this too, man. We'll go back to the because this is important for the Leos out there, right here in the Leo game, uh, and because everything out here is a game in life. It's a, it's a life is a game. You have to learn to play it. When you got out, or you were kind of forced to medically retire, if you if you would share that with the other out here that might not realize what's coming in the future, would you share that why you were forced to? Retire? I went in, um, had my surgeries years ago, 
know, and finally have to get your cases closed out through a qualified medical examiner that works for the state. I went to three different ones, three different opinions. All opinions back the lowest one was 62% disabled because of my age. Basically saying I'm going to be arthritic, there's going to be future problems. I'm fine now. I work out. Everything. I'm, I'm fine. I'm not. That's what the 46, okay. And so basically the doctors give you a rating based on your surgery, where the injury is, things like that. And mine came back a total of 62% total body is what they call it. So Highway Patrol has a policy. You can't, anything over 50%, you have to retire. You can't work the road. They won't give you desk jobs in Highway Patrol. You gotta be road worthy or else nothing. Right. So that's just the way it is. Basically, this, this is coming back from, I'm run under the old retirement system, 3% at age 50. So for every year that I worked, 3% I got at age 50. So I was at 73% when they told me at 50% free. Right. Basically, what happened to the percent? I paid 138000 to buy that five years. Now, well, let, me, let, let me slow you down there, too. If you start talking a little bit faster on your phone, it kind of starts missing some words. Uh, okay. j- just so you know, just so you know, um, and you want to speak up a little bit more. But what do you mean okay. you? What do you mean you bought back the time? Now that's not the purpose of the call. This call is handling DOT and, and law enforcement officers as a CDL 18 wheel big rig truck driver. That's the purpose of the call. But I want to give you his backstory. But what was the? What, how did you? What do you mean you bought the, the time back? What do you mean by that? With the state of California. You have- military service, you can buy back that military service. The longer you're in, the more expensive it is. So if you do it early in your career, it's cheaper. I did it a few years ago, so five years of military service, I'm back towards my CHP retirement. Okay. So that was 138000 So 3% for every five years. Okay. You know, so that's, you know, 15 more percent. You right. Know, or, yeah. On top of it. so basically all that time, all that money put into it, they want to retire fifty percent and the state doesn't pay me. Their insurance pays me the rest of my life. Well that was that was one of the things on the on the pre interview, that was one of the things you said too. The the whole plan is is to try and medically retire the potential retiree officers to avoid the state having to carry that burden through the rest of their life. Yes, it looks better on each department. If each department, California, other departments can do that, they can retire a guy out on a medical, the insurance picks that up. The state's not paying that guy's retirement the rest of his life. So it looks better for that department when they come down to number crunching time. Is, is, let me ask you this, man. When all this was happening to you, you know, you were former military, a CHP, you've seen, every, seen the worst of the worst of people. Did, wasn't that a kick in the head when all that was going on? Wasn't that just a kick in the head? It was, it was probably the, one of the lowest points of my life when they tell you that, and, and, and you don't know what to do because here you are going to give up potentially, I'm 45, potentially millions of years. Right. If you think about it, I put in 130, and then on top of all the years of 23% more, that's a lot of money. If I lived to 90, let's say I lived to 80, I mean, so you just do the math and you're like, I can't believe they're doing this to me. Right. Right. So, yeah, it, it was, that was, just blew me away. Yeah, and I, I heard it in your voice the first time you told me about it, and you sent me a long email to kind of sum these things. Let's kind of, if you don't mind, brother, um, I just like talking about how to handle, and this is, this is going to be a hard left turn we're taking right now from that kind of conversation. I did a stream last uh, on how to handle DOT and how to handle police officers and sheriffs out here as a CDL big rig truck driver. What do you think the biggest problem is that especially new truck drivers coming in the business have dealing with CDL or dealing with the uh, police officers, DOT officers? What do you think the biggest problem they have is the number one thing that you said with your experience? I think it's the number one problem is the once the previous system of cops and then you get with a DOT guy that's there inspecting your truck or inspecting the paperwork and stuff. It's a different level than a, than a city cop that's pulling you over because of a taillight in your car. You understand the picture. We're looking at more of a safety. 
So, so bringing your attitude to, of street cop in your little town or your city isn't the same. So you, you should just erase that and think on a bigger level, like you're dealing with a bigger shipper, like an IKEA shipper or something like that. I said that last night that I think that I think there's so many people out here. The one mistake I see them make is they bring their block, they bring how they were raised on their block, whatever neighborhood, whatever body they be here and they. That, that's how they approach the officers that deal with them. And I think that's a huge hindrance. I think that gets in the way a lot because you and I both know, man, as, as, a, as a, I'm not going to speak for you, or you right away are giving you attitude. Like when the pro second, you sense the change in demeanor, the change of personality, the change, the, how their words come out on that, that you pick up on that. Yeah. Yeah. Now with now when you were doing uh let's talk about this because I talked last night last night or the previous night I got I was on the side of the road. I had just sent a picture of my reefer temperature and I'd re sent it into dispatch and in a in a a high a stady, I call them stadies, but a highway patrol. I stated to be disrespectful, but that's what I call them. Um he no, pulls a stady pulls up out of nowhere. I didn't I didn't see his white his 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 headlights come up. All I saw when by the time he was behind me, he was flashing his red, white, and blue. Red, white, and blues. And I, you know, out of nowhere, and right away, I'm thinking, okay, I can walk back towards him if I can. Because I don't, you're, you're a police officer. I don't want a police officer up in my cab, up on the side step. I don't want him at the front door of my house asking me questions, you know. I just don't want that encounter from a plan from their business and in that situation. And I began walking towards them. You made some comments about that last night about what I did, and, and you could expound on that from a, from an officer standpoint. Because I was out in the middle of nowhere. He, knew. I'm getting back in my truck. He pulls up on passes the lights. I don't know if he pulled, came in behind me with his lights on to me to support me, thinking I was doing something illicit. I don't know, but thought. Also worried for his safety, you know. So it's not. I have to. I have to consciously remember that in those situations. Exactly. Exactly. Or you're getting he comes up on you, or you're doing something under it. You see him walking towards you. Keep your hands where you can see him. Face him to where he can see the first movements, which I'm in your pocket, reach behind you, things like that. Because he's got to worry about his. He's looking at he, his level right now is safety first and foremost. Right. Once once you take that away, once you take that that what, what am I dealing with? A trucker looking at his tire. You you stepped it down now. Yeah, you still have officer safety, but now you stepped it down to this guy's not coming at me. You know. And another thing, if he's walking towards you, stop walking. Stop where you're at. Just stand there. You put your hands in front of you. And just, you know, say, you know, I'm, and then explain, sir, I'm checking out my tire, uh, I'm checking out, you know, blah, 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 whatever you're doing, just be clear and just, but, you know, and be, you know, think, be, my biggest thing is be respectful to him, even if he's a jerk to you, eat a little crow, because you never know what's going on. He could have had a, a call being, just got abducted by a trucker. You never know. Right. Well, as Paul said too, that was a good comment on, on, on the feed from last. It was a horrible feed last night. Um, somebody else said that the the, the side the road is save your dialogue, save your chat, defend your position for the courthouse. Give them what they need. Handle the conversation. Your bit number one, your business. This, this is a business. I'm driving a seat. In his case, the state patrol car as a business. Handle the business right there. Handle the business. Be be polite. Be professional. Now again, I, you, what you're saying about safety. When he walked up on me, um, and if, if you're watching this, it's not a jam on you, sir. I'm not saying that as a jam, but when he walked up on me, he was a small guy, you know. And if he was by himself, he was by himself as well. The guy 
I probably five foot eight, five foot nine, what I, what it seemed like to me. And I'm six two, and he's in the middle of nothing. He's walking up. You know, he met me at the back of my truck. He walked a little bit from his car and met me towards the back. But I have to be conscious of my size as well. Just like you know, him being in the middle of nowhere and him having to worry about what's he pulling up on. Because you don't know. I mean, I'm sure you've seen things that you could you know spend two hours on on a call tonight talking about the things you've seen as a, as a, as a CHP out here. Bigger guys, so we decided at that point what's okay. You got a million kids going through, and what people don't understand is by policy is even if a truck's on the side of the road and it's a county road that we're in charge of, mm -hmm. we have to stop and make sure everything's all right. But our job, we have to stop and see they're all right. You never know. Oh, so when he's when he let me ask you this. That, that, that comment, Ponch. And again, I appreciate you making a quick moment to do this call tonight as, as a Leo. So you're telling me you're telling me that from his procedures, he was required to stop. It. I go for our policy and see if any vehicle on the side of the road disabled or not, whatever the reason, it is pulled over. By policy, we have to stop. We're not if we're in route to an emergency call or something like that. Right. But if, routine patrol, a truck on the side of the road, especially a truck pulls over on a freeway. I mean, because you're not allowed to sleep out here on the freeways. You're not allowed to pull over. I mean, they're very strict out here in California on big rigs on the side of the road. Yeah. Well, you know, this this whole thing last night when I did the, when I did the live stream counter, I see where, I see where new CDL drivers, especially in the rougher neighborhood. I see them out here and they can probably walk themselves into verbal confrontations they don't need to have, but they don't know how to back it down and how to elevate their game. That's what I, that's what I believe. I, they don't know how to, they haven't been checked how to not be on the block talking versus talking. The thing we're doing out here is a federal law. We're having, you know, abide by federal regulations on the safety, on the, on the logs, et cetera, than being a, 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 in your city on your block. He's not there to jam you up. He's there to make sure that you're not. It's hard to say. It's hard to. Once you're trained DOT, once you're trained on the commercial side of the world, you're there to get the drivers that we've all seen that should be, shouldn't be on the road where those aren't the problems. Right. We're not there to jam up, up the. Right. Let me ask you this too, man. From a, a lead, you ever think on on these calls that you can't just you know tell the truth, bro? Whatever you feel. When I got out, I, like I was getting back in my car, he flashed his red white. Me to salute him. I got. I, I put my hands out of the out of the window because the window was down. I hands out of the window to let him know I was, I was you know this unarmed. And I back out of the car towards him. Even when I was doing it, I was thinking, you know what? Nine out of ten people will tell you, don't do that. Stay where you are, let the officer come to you. But I'm like, no, you know what? Just before, I don't want a police officer cab. I have nothing to hide. I just don't want to, I don't want to, I want to give them the back of the tractor, the back trailer. We talk about whatever, they, if I can. I didn't want him to walk up on me. Um, I have nothing to hide, but I just didn't want that encounter to happen at my cab at on the side of my truck. And some people said, well, you made a mistake. You shouldn't have done it. You should have waited for him. I'm like, you know what? I, if had, 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 had he flashed his, his red, whites, and blues at me um, a, a second later, I, I would have been on the side of I just got back. What do you think about that? No. No, I mean, what you did is fine. If he has a problem, if we have a problem with you walking towards us, we'll say, sir, just stop right there. Just, just hang tight. I'll be with you, you know. Because we're used to walking up, looking not just at you. We're looking up at your cab. We don't know if someone there's loading the AK. We don't know if there's a shotgun. We don't know if someone's in the front of your truck coming around. So we're assessing everything around you walking towards us. So we want to stop all movement, the situation, and realize. 
safety is there. Yeah. Okay, once that's there, then we figure out what's going on. So then that, that's a great, you put yourself in the military time, and you, you have surrendering, but you're also looking around you. You were trained in surrendering. It's not just this guy surrendering, because it's the other guy that's around the corner that's going to snipe you. Right. Right. So, I mean, you just look at things like, okay, let him just, for a minute, collect his being figure out what's going on. But yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. I agree 100%. I don't want them in my car, other cops. I don't, I just, I'm not comfortable with them. In my house, if they come to my house for a call, I step outside of my house and talk to them for a reason. Yep. And yeah. that's just the way I am too. I'm not, it's not that I don't trust. I just don't want, I just don't want them. And I, I know exactly what you mean. And I'm a hundred. If they don't have to come up, they to the cat, that's just, and, and you don't want people just nosing around your house. I mean, it's just the way it is. Yeah, and so, someone, someone else made, yeah, someone else made another Leo. I think he said he was Leo eleven or twelve years. I'm not worried. I'm not worried about them having, you know, finding drugs. I'm not worried. None of that bothers me. I just, I want to keep as much mine as I can, especially out of your time. Because we're out here moving down the road, we're pulled into way stations all the time. You know, sometimes we, we bypass them. It's nice to have a chance to go, you know what, I want to have this, and I want to control this encounter back at the back of my trailer if I can. It's not that I had anything to hide at all, about drugs being found, all that stuff. I just like to have at least some parts of my life during the day. Uh, if he would have come, if he would have met me at the back of the trailer, walked me back up to listen, you know, look back at your logs. And Chance, myself the chance to it goes it goes back to my salesmanship i want to control the encounter as much as i could you know attitude would and your attitude would if you're at me i'd walk up on you you'd say hey you'd be like oh okay everything cool you guys cool all right you fine i'm doing my job of making sure you're not broke down you're not injured you're not hostage Right. Therefore, my encounter with you is over. If I choose to stay there and chat where you're heading to or something like that, that's on me. But I'm not going to go check your logs and all that crap and let the reason for the important need to go that far. If right. You're, not, if you're like, didn't want me near the cab really bad. You know, if I, if you're just like, yeah, I'm just checking this, so I keep pushing back, getting that feeling, then I have a reason to go up there. Now you're hiding something. Right, right. You know what I mean? Right. But, Violated. You feel violated. When we have to search, we're taught the minute you search that vehicle, you have violated these people's. You have violated them, and they're going to drive away feeling violated of some sort because you've now searched in, in things that have seen. Right. A feeling that you gave someone. So be very certain when the CHP has a very, very strict policy on doing searches on vehicles. You gotta have a really damn good reason to get in that vehicle. Right. right. Well you know the, the night before last that happened it was it kind of a couple of quick a couple of quick side stories. First, I I would never have thought to put my hands out the window and then walk back towards them with my front of me myself like I did. I would have never thought to do that. I was in uh, Baltimore at a dealership helping a dealer and with a couple that had bought a car and the, the tag in the back of the car that we, the, 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 the dealer tag was not very easily seen and they were out driving the car they, they, had, they had already said yes to buying it they were having second doubts so as a manager I jumped in the car so I was going to run, run the block one more time let me answer your questions myself you know so I'm sitting there in a suit and tie and these, guys, these, these, uh, these black folks are in the black there's a husband and wife it was a daughter that was I think 12 I'm going from memory and I think the youngest daughter was 6 and let me tell you this, Ponch, we're out driving around the block, went maybe five miles, about two and a half miles in, a cop popped the lights on them because they couldn't see the dealer tag in the back window of the, of the Jeep that they were going to buy. And yeah. when, the, when the officer walked up, as soon as he popped the lights, we pulled over, the, the driver pulled over, the husband that he pulled over, I was in the front seat with him. And I tell you, Ponch, it was stunning to me. This is why I put my hands out the window last night in the middle of nowhere, totally dark. 
everybody in that car except for me had their hands on this, you know, towards the ceiling, even the kids, even I'm getting chills telling you that even the children had their hands in the air as soon as he popped his lights and pulled them over. And I'm sitting there, you know, and I'm like, I'm looking at this going, wow, this is what they this is this is them reacting to the lights being you know blown in, in the back of of their vehicle. And I'm sitting there looking at them going, wow. And that last night I thought about that exact or not, not night before last. I thought about that exactly when it happened. I'm like, I got to put my hands up. Let this guy know that I'm, I'm not a, a threat because Baltimore is a very, very rough area, as most cops know. Yeah. yeah. You know, but it, it, that was the first thing. I, I knew that I had to show him my hands, and I thought about that when I was walking back towards him. I would have never thought about that otherwise. I've never seen anybody do that before. I've never been in a situation where I had to put my hands in the air and, and show a police officer I was unarmed. And here you have kids, 12 and 6, I think they were, doing the same thing with the parents. I'm like, it was just, it was very stunning. It was very stunning. Um, let, me ask, let me ask you this too, man. Um, from the encounter I talked about, a little bit, it was a little bit jaggy on the, on the playback last night. Uh, you being a CHP now, you're in you're in Cali too, where you know weed's legal, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, you're you're, you're seeing all sorts of things. You're also I'm not going to mention the town you're in, but you're in a crazy town uh, that you patrol. Yep. The things you see with CDL truckers, what are some of the, what are some of the signs you look for? What are the, some of the signs you look for? Other than obviously the you know lights being out, easy easy pull over. What are some of the signs you you look for once you you're engaged with them? Uh, you mean to pull one over or after the stop? At, well, after the stop. You pull them over for maybe a headlight being out or maybe a taillight being out or maybe a turn signal not working. You pull them over and then what's your, like you're sizing up the totality of the situation, but you're also trying to fine tune things and see what's not congruent and, and see what needs to be paid attention to. What, what are you looking for? Looking for cooperation, basically. Um, when I walk up on them and I walk up on that passenger door and just pull the door open or they, and they leave it locked and they don't want to open it, right there is a confrontation. It's, usually we like to open the door to talk to you through the door so we don't have to climb up. And if we climb up, we want to do one step. We don't want to climb and talk to you through a window. That's okay. just, that's, that's not safe. Okay, so you're saying for a trucker, this is for a trucker now, you're saying open the door. Yeah, just leave, that, leave, leave your passenger door unlocked. Because we op normally we'll open it, we'll knock on it, and then we'll pull the door open. And then we'll talk to you, we'll step up one and kind of talk you through the open door. That way it, it's more personable instead of through a window standing up on the side of your rig. That way we just feel unsafe. Right. And, you know, you just then you start looking for, you know, they're usually digging. Nine times out of ten, they're digging for the paperwork. They're digging for a registration or an insurance. They're, they've got their wallet out. Um you know, things like that. The best thing to do is you're getting pulled over, you stop that truck, grab that driver's license, grab that medical card, grab that registration, and if you got an insurance card in there, a lot of times we can go off the DOT number on the side for your insurance. Mm -hmm. Just have that stuff ready. Just have it maybe sitting out on the seat, and you just have your hands on the steering wheel just sitting there looking at it. You know, like, how you doing, sir? You know, things like that, because we're going to eat out here in California. We're taught to be polite no matter what. Just be polite. And I know what you're saying back east. I have a, a brother back in Ohio that's a cop, and it's a different world back there than out here. And it's it's different. It's it's different. It's you know, it's it's different. Yeah. It's different in Ohio versus Cali. Yes, it's very very great. And and, and not just to where they hate one another, but they prejudge. Where in California. Where I'm at, and I'll say it's the Bay Area. The Bay Area is where I'm at in the Bay Area, northern. Mm -hmm. But you have a mix of everything out here. So to be a, a racist in this area would kill you because you have everything from Middle Eastern to Indian to Latino to black to, I mean, you name it, you have it. Gay, lesbian, um, trans, everything. You have everything. It's 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 a mixed bag of everything. So you can't be that way. And I go back home to Ohio, and I see the way that my brother talks. And he's a cop, 22 years. And I'm like, oh my god, he's like 15 years behind us. Wow. The way they think. But he's not a racist. He doesn't hate different. But the way they categorize people when they make a stop, we can't do that. We don't. We're taught not to do that. It's almost like. 
force-fed into our head because out here you never know what you're stopping. You never know who, what, when, or how, what you're, you know, who they are. Right. Be, you think it's a woman, you walk up and it's a man, or vice versa, mm-hmm. or you don't know. So I, it's just it's amazing that that, and I know that happens, like you said. So, but yeah, if a, if you get stopped on there, you know, I'm looking for cooperation. That's it. Just just simple cooperation. Yeah, well, I like what the guy said on the on the comments. He said it's not it's not the courthouse. It's the side of the road. Save your save your defense of yourself as a CDL driver. Save it for the courthouse. You know, and yeah. uh, and give the officer. Now let me ask you this: from the officer standpoint, pulling you over, this is a good this is a good comment or a good a good uh, question. I think from the officer standpoint, from your standpoint, you pull me over in Cali. You know, you you found whatever reason to pull me over. Maybe I didn't I didn't turn. I didn't use my turn signal moving into the other lane. You pull me over. Um, when you and I encounter each other, you're polite, you're friendly, I'm polite, I'm friendly, but how hard or how high can you escalate that that stop? I mean, can you make that a level one inspection just from pulling me over for, a, a, you know, not, not a turn signal, just because of my attitude? Can you do a full inspection of the vehicle? That's one of the things people on my channel say is they're like, well, you know, the, cop, the police officer can't go behind the curtain and, and do a, a cab inspection. And I'm thinking, you know what? In my mind, if it's a, if it's a Leo that, that sees attitude, they're going to call the drug dog. And I don't know what the drug dog's cue is that there's anything in the truck, you know? So they can always say, well, he, he alerted. And then all of a sudden, now the truck's going to be broken down. Where, where do you draw the line? Where do you, where do you guys, I mean, like you, you pull somebody over for a, a, a light, the conversation is going well, but you say, you know what? I was still, I want to check some more things. Can you keep escalating that, that stop from a, a you know, the, 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 the lower incident up to the higher incident level one full inspection? Can you do that pretty simply and pretty easily without having to get permission? Yeah, we can actually, if the truck's on the road out here, if it's on the roadway, we can at any time stop it, flag it in, and do a full inspection on it. The full inspection means without it means back in the back behind the curtain, everything. Yeah, we can we can go through that whole check brakes, check everything. Oh, we can the biggest threat out here in California is I'm gonna call one of my commercial guys over. Just sit tight. I'm, I'm, you're, you're out of service until my commercial guy comes over and checks you out. And no trucker out here wants that because our commercial guys are, are like us officers, but they're special trained. They drive pickup trucks and they come out and they're so highly trained on the commercial side. That's all they do is commercial enforcement. Right. Is you, they crawl through your truck. It's over. <laughs> I mean, most most truckers out here that know. You don't want the commercial guys messing with you. Now, see, I've never, I've, now, Ponce, Ponce, this whole call tonight, this whole call, I've never heard that before. I've never heard that there was a quote and unquote. Are those commercial guys the same people that are at the way stations? Yeah, it's the black and white pickup trucks you've seen. The okay. CHP pickup trucks. Okay. That's a CHP officer, just like me, but he's on special assignment on commercial enforcement. So he's had more training. He's went to, like, I think it's, I don't know, 160, 180 hours of just commercial enforcement. Wow, okay. And that's what he does. So that's his main job. We're all trained to be commercial, but they're actually, that's their specialty. So they drive those slower pickup trucks, and they have the portable weights in the back. They have everything. The back of those trucks are fully equipped to do everything on your truck. Wow, wow. Well, the Wolverine wants to ask you a question. Go ahead, Wolf. Uh, All right, so, Ponch, let me ask you a quick question. Um, What's the, from a law enforcement uh person's perspective um somebody's gonna pull me over and they want to do an inspection um however it's kind of hard for them to inspect the brakes uh without somebody being in the cab assisting them however and and i and i don't know that's i'm i'm just asking an honest question here i think i know where you're going with this (laughs) am i compelled to to help the law enforcement officer uh, potentially find things that will go against me and thus violate my constitutional rights for uh, uh, self-incrimination? Yes, you have to comply with what they say or they can put you out of service and get another officer out there to help them. Therefore, now you have uh, non-compliance on your privileged driver's license. That's a good point. That's a good point because there was actually a video uh, that I found on YouTube. I actually reached out to the guy. I never did respond. He did that. He, when, he, when he got pulled over, he said, I'm not going to help you check anything because it's self-incriminating. 
I never did get a resolution for what happened to him, but I would just I would just imagine it just pisses the officers off. They call somebody else out. It just escalates the frustration, the 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 encounter, and nothing good happens with escalating that. Nothing good happens with with antagonizing that in my mind. Yeah, it was that exact same oh. video that I. That's what. That's why I wanted to ask. I knew what the answer was. I've been doing this for a long time. I just wanted somebody out there to set the record straight. Gotcha, gotcha. I, I totally get what you're saying. You don't want to sit here and say, "Oh, by the way, look under my hood. I'm missing this. I'm missing that." <laughs> you know, like, wait a minute. Yeah, no. But I get what you're saying. Um, it's the same thing. It's it's like, I you know, you could you could. Like with anything, it's like you almost got to sell yourself that, hey, I checked this out this morning. I'm on hour nine of driving, so something could be wrong. I've noticed the brake pedal a little whatever, or I've noticed this, I've noticed that. The steering linkage was a little loose. I was, I was, when, as soon as I stopped, I was going to check it out. I just haven't stopped. You know, you can play it off. People don't understand. Your, your words, your attitude, your demeanor is going to get you so far with these DOT officers because they don't want to work and they don't want to crawl under a greasy truck any more than you want them to. Right. Right. No, I, I, be I believe that. I believe that. Every every encounter I've had so far, and again, when I go to the Pacific Northwest, they are, I mean, especially going into Oregon, I mean, they, and <laughs> they, 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 they're going to always pull you in, always check something. But I always, the, the people that I speak to when I go inside, and I came in kind of a little bit sketchy the first couple of times because I'm like, oh, here we go. Here we go. But they've all been super polite and super friendly back to me. There's never been an issue. There's never even the even the woman. I shouldn't say the woman, even the officer who uh, gave me a, 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 a PSP points for uh, some small things. Super polite, super friendly, super good woman, good, good officer. There was no antagonistic thing at all. But you're breaking. You know, it, we don't talk about that. But, <laughs> but there was just no, there, it just was it wasn't a bad encounter. The things that she found were things that I, I really had nothing to say about. I'm like, okay, I'm, you know, you're right. And there's no reason defending it, but she wasn't obnoxious while she was doing it. I had the benefit of that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I get, I get to, and from my cousin and my uncles and stuff that drive, now my brother's a driver out of Phoenix. He just started with Schneider. He, Everyone hates coming to California as a truck driver. It's just one of those states where you got to do 55, you got to stay to the farm. It's just a sucky state for truck drivers. They make it hard to make a living doing this job out here. It's just hard. And anyone coming into the state for the first time is going to have a real eye-opener driving rig. It's just a fact. Yeah. And California makes it so hard to be a truck driver here and to actually drive that I get it. So we get it. A lot of us officers get it. We, we understand it's harder than any other state. It's just a pain in the butt. But if you just, we have a job to do too. And we have certain things at times when you're assigned to the scales that day to help out. And they want you to write extra a couple tickets for mud slaps or something. It's a fix it ticket, people. It's not going to go on your record. Just fix it. Wait, wait, say that, say that, punch, punch, say that one more time. You call it a fix it ticket? Yeah, there's two kinds of tickets you can get. A, a CHP form 215 is a pink ticket. The, your copy will be yellow, but it says 215 up in the top left or right. That one is a real ticket. That one's going to go on your record. Now, if it's the other one, uh, a 280, 281, form 281, it's also a yellow copy. That's just a fix-it ticket, and that doesn't go on your driving record. A lot of times... We'll give you a fix-it ticket for mud flaps, um, tread on the tires, too low, things like that, if you're cooperative. But we can also put those fix-it items on a normal ticket to go on your permanent record. People don't understand that. So it's, in California, it behooves you to be nice, to be courteous. And even if the cops being an ass and there are people out there that are badge heavy, be eat a little crow. Because remember, it's your job. It's like if your boss comes at you, he's gotten a fight with his wife, and now he's coming at you and saying, go do this, go do that. You're, you're not going to throw your job away just because your boss yelled at you. Right. So it's the same thing. Just remember that. It's the same thing. Eat a little, bro. You know. Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't, I didn't know that. I've never heard that before. This call, 
of everything you've shared, Ponch, that one nugget right there, that was so beautiful that you shared that. It was so beautiful, right? that, that one nugget. So say that, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, just so it, it, gets, it gets indexed properly by, by YouTube and by Google, say that, that, that paragraph one more time uh, 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 about the, the tickets, the two types of tickets. Say it one more time for the viewers. This is a nugget. You folks listen up. This is a nugget. Say it one more time about the two, two tickets. Yeah. Two types of tickets for the CHP. First one's a CHP 215. That's the kind of ticket you get when you do speeding, uh, things like that. We can also put mechanical violations on those tickets if we want to. Those go on your permanent record. Those go straight to the courthouse and go get documented on your record. A CHP 281 is a <coughs> fixed ticket, which only goes straight to our office once you fix it. If you don't fix it within the allotted amount of time on that little form, that little ticket, it looks like a normal ticket, but it's a 281. That's the form number, 281. It'll say on there. You'll know what you get when you get it. So if you get a 281, that one goes straight to our office, never goes to the court, doesn't go on your record, as long as you fix it in time and get it signed off. Okay. Hey, Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Wolverine wants to ask another question. Hey, Ponch, I do have a, I do have a quick question. Is there any kind of... Um, is there any kind of warning ticket that you can get that does come with points? No, there's no, there's no warnings. I know the commercial guys have their own separate forms <coughs> they fill out for truckers, uh -huh. um, like the motor carrier forms and stuff. When you get inspected, so yeah, those are different. They have those on their side of the house. I haven't been trained on because they're more in depth. So if they come and they pull you over, a commercial unit pulls you over and says, I'm going to do an inspection on your truck, get off the freeway and go into this parking lot, follow me. Then there's there's warnings they can give you there that are documented on your, on your I don't know the name of the report that's for you as a driver. Mm -hmm. That can get yeah. documented on there if you don't have it fixed in time. Okay. But it has to go back to the CHP. Then they say, okay, he fixed it in time. We're not going to put it on his record. Okay. Okay. If you ignore it, if you ignore it, then eventually they will cite you out a ticket. You'll get mailed a ticket. You have to take care of it. Now it's on your record, so now it's the whole thing. Right. Okay. Give me another question. Uh, yeah, I do have one more. Um, from a law enforcement officer's standpoint, at what, as a general rule, where would the line be drawn, or not, not exactly drawn, but where is the differentiating um, place to somebody's being cooperative, but not being overly, um, overly, I don't even know, uh, volunteering information and stuff, you know, because there's some things, you know, that you might want to like, you know, business is business, friends is friends, you're not my friend, you're doing business, you know, having a good day and stuff like that, but yeah. I don't want to, you know, because you, you see so many videos on YouTube these days of people that are baiting cops just to get the yeah. reaction and stuff like that. And I think it's hilarious when they end up, uh, anyway. Uh, but but where where is that friendly little line right there that, that I can be like, know where it's okay to like, they're not gonna get upset if I, cause you know, you, there's fishing, if, you know, cause that's your job, you know, you're, you're trying to ascertain information if you can get a little bit extra information um, that, you know, you're gonna wanna do that. That's part of your job and stuff like that. So, um, I guess to to put it in a nice little box, where where is that little differentiating line from your own personal experience? Like where you say basically I'm I'm talking to you and I want to know you know I'm not gonna look at your log, but did you update it this morning? And you're like, oh yeah. You'll be like, what time did you update it? What time did you start driving? You know, I'll start asking questions like that. Right. You'll be like, oh, you know, yeah, yeah, I started as soon as I start, I log. So basically you at a, a level of, boom, I did this and this, and that's it. You, you give him information, not exact, not exact, just enough to be like... Compliant. You know, basically, you, yeah, yeah, you have to basically, but then you're still polite about it. Yes, sir, I, as soon as I started, part of my policy is the same this morning. I, when I start, I log, and I started driving, and that's the end of it. You don't go into, I started at 8, and I had an 8 or 2. I, I, I did my pre-trip, and then I came back and put my put it in my log, and blah, blah, blah. You don't need to do all that. So basically, you just keep it very superficial, but polite. But polite. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah. people, and I've been in the in my past, 
accused sometimes you get a little chatty and offer a little too much information that you didn't didn't necessarily hurt you but you didn't necess necessarily have to go down that rabbit hole either yeah yeah so. you know it's just yeah it's one of those things you just my thing is people like you can still be very superficial about what he asked you in a sense unless it's very specific about safety and things like that right. that's different but if it's just he's asking you to bait you to see maybe he can climb into your logs or something like that now, let me see your shipping paperwork. Be like, where are you coming from? Where are you going? To, you know, you said, I came from this shipper down here. I'm heading to this destination, and I started at this time. That's it. You know, you keep it very, just like you're talking to uh, a ship out there. You know, you just keep it professional. You just keep it, yes, sir, no, sir. Okay, I understand. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Well, again, I, I, I think it's, I, I appreciate so much, because from a Leo standpoint, you see the worst of the worst. You know that, and tell me if I'm wrong. Nothing good happens after eleven o'clock at night. I mean, nothing, especially no. midnight. Nothing good happens. It's all bad. No, nope. it's all. It's. I mean, it's. And the people that are out at that hour are, are two people. You know, it's people either going to work, coming home from work, a later talk, or people usually up to no good, either drunk driving or heading out to go driving drunk. Or and out here, everything it's high. You know, you could drive down the road on the motorcycle and you're splitting lanes in California, and I smell it like you wouldn't believe. I mean, it's, it's, it's like being in a concert, and it's just in your face all the time. And you're on the freeway driving. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, I don't laugh because I think it's funny. I laugh because it's got to be, you, you and I both know, once they legalized it, everybody's getting, everybody's blazing up and driving. They're blazing up and just relaxing and driving. But let me ask you this, too. Let me ask you this. Is, this is probably a question some of the people in the, in the rougher neighborhoods want to hear. Do you have a lot of violent encounters with people that are just blazed up or, or more so with people that are drunk or, you know, off, off some pills or things? It would seem to me that the people that are just blazed up are more mellow. They are. The people that are blazed up are more mellow. And what people don't really... And, and the funny thing is, most people don't put this, the worst drunks out there are well-to-do, sophisticated women that are drunk, believe it or not. You know, like a businesswoman, mm -hmm. you pull her over and she's drunk, nine times out of ten, you're going to end up fighting with her. Really? Because, because, yeah, the sense of entitlement. Because out here in California, you never know, because it's so expensive to live here, especially in the Bay Area, these, a lot of these people are millionaires and you don't even know it. So right. they just look at you like, why are you stopping me? You yeah. know? And you're like, you're weaving, it's three in the morning, I've only had a glass of wine, or, you know, the famous line, I've only had two drinks. Right. You know, it's like... Two uh, drinks on know. top of the two bottles. <laughs> so. yeah. yeah, exactly. The last two signed before they got in the truck. All right, People brother. still don't understand that marijuana, just because it's illegal, it's the same as an out a beer. You can't have a beer in your car when driving down the road. doesn't mean you can have a, a joint in the ashtray driving down the road. Right. People don't get that. Right. People don't get that. Right. Let me ask you too, man. Um, with with we're we're at like uh, almost fifty minutes, brother. You've been so polite and friendly to jump on this call. I appreciate it so much. Um, what would you What would you summarize this whole call about if you were to summarize from a Leo standpoint? Talking to you were standing in front of a new class, a new training class of CDL eighteen wheel big rig truckers, people that came from every background, every nationality, every sex, and they're about to start driving an eighteen wheeler. And they bring you into that class to speak to these these potential drivers, these new drivers that are two weeks from getting, you know, <clears throat> with the company. What would you give? What what highlights would you tell them? What would you tell them as a, as a Leo? The highlights you'd give them. Basically, basically I, just, I would I'd be I'd be honest, brutally honest. Is take what you've learned, take your past out of it, take your all the hangups you have of your dealings with cops. I understand. There's a lot of jerk cops out there that are, you know, badge heavy, things like that. Take that out of that when you get in that rig. When you get in that rig, it's the same as being in an office building. And if you're in an office building and your boss comes up to you and says, hey, I need you to do this, or hey, what about that? Look at it that way. Look at it as DOT is the boss of the road. They're there to keep the road safe. You are on the road by permission by them rig down the road to get to your destination to make money. You're mm -hmm. in a job. Mm -hmm. There's no difference. So your biggest thing is, like with your boss, if you want to keep your job, you want to keep that license and no points on it, you don't want your boss crawling around not upset with you looking into everything you're doing, you're going to be nice to him. Be polite. Just be polite. Even if he's being a jerk, 
say, I'm, I'm so sorry, sir. I'm sorry for, you know, whatever I did to upset you. Things like that. It's a business. People start looking at it when you're in that rig and you're dealing with a cop. That be professional, be polite, be courteous. It's fine. Even if he's being the way he is. Nine times out of ten, the cop's being filmed by his own department. There's right. almost no department left in this country that's not federally <laughs> mandated to now film. So if you have a problem, call and complain. The worst thing you could do to an officer is complain against him. That screws him up, at least out here in California. That screws him up for a long time. Right, right. And that's a, that's a good that's a good point. Video video has been a great equalizer. It's been a great equalizer both ways, um, very yeah. much so. Let me let me say this too. If I'm correct, what is your potential next move? Your potential next move for the Ponchmeister? What's your, what's your potential next move in the in the business world? What are you thinking about doing? I am actually. I start on the twenty Monday, the twentieth of day, twenty ninth of October, Phoenix uh, with Knight. So. The whole, the great, the great wrap in for this whole call. You got a Leo. You got a former military guy. Uh, he's seen it all, done it all, especially on, in the in the Frisco Bay Area, Northern Frisco. One of my best friends is from that area, by the way. Um, but he's seen all the bad things, and he's seen everything about truckers. Now he wants to also get in this side of the business, which I, I think is kind of cool. I see a lot of Leos come in this business. Why do you think this this business attracts Leos? What do you think that does, Ponch? I think it's because. You gotta think a Leo, nine times out of ten hours is on patrol. We're in a car or a motorcycle or whatever for so many hours. We're already driving we're already professionally trained drivers, a lot of us. Especially with the highway patrol, because we're you're highly trained driving. And to get behind the wheel, we're already those type personalities that are are, you know, can be solo, can be by ourselves, can, you know, don't you know, can deal with people but basically like to because the longer you're a Leo, the more the more you start getting cynical towards people. So being by yourself in a truck sounds appealing. It sounds like I could do that. I could do that. And the kind of like you said, the kind of money that you can make out there and the th- and, and all that, you be your own boss for the first time, why not? Why not? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, you know, this business, man, especially for more mature people, like guys, you know, guys and girls like you that have been left alone. You do your own gig all day long. You're you, you're giving your you're giving your your job description. Go do it. You're left alone. This business is a great fit, man. It's a great fit to be left alone. Go make good money. Now you're already making six figures being a being a Leo, so you have a little bit less ground to cover to you know to feel comfortable. But and you have the retirement on you know behind that. But it is a yeah. it is a great relaxing business. You're left alone, and I'm sure I'm sure that the 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 blue the blue wall of, uh, of, of respect and love, if they pull you over and see that you're a former Leo, I'm sure there's a little bit different dialogue with you versus me. And that's to be expected. Just like, just like when I speak to military folks, it's a different dialogue. There's no, no shame in that. So probably easier for you coming out here too with you know, dealing with Leos and dealing with DOT. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's, like I said, no matter what, you know, I've had former cops that I pulled over and they're just jerks to everyone and they're, you know, because they're mad at the world for whatever reason they lost their job, whatnot. And it's the same thing. You write your own, we always say you write your own ticket. You write your own ticket. That's a great saying. That's a great saying. That's a great saying. You want to add anything else, Wolverine, before we go other than go Michigan? Well, (laughs) no, because Ponch, this was such a great interview. Ponch, this is for you, man. Go Buckeyes. Oh my God. I don't, oh, wow. <laughs> I don't even know who's that's sitting next to me. Right? Got to be your opener now on every life thing you do. Don't push it, bro. <laughs> but I remember I took a I, I took a class at a college one time, uh, uh, some kind of like law enforcement class or whatever. And I remember the the, the professor was a uh, ex police officer, and he always he had, his number one saying was, "I always said when I was." Uh, being a cop, that you can never argue your way out of a ticket, but you sure can argue your way into one. Exactly. So. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, folks that are watching, we have about about ninety people watching. Be nice with about sixty more. You Vikings walk over that like button and smashed it with your Viking forehead, your Viking elbow, your Viking paw. I want to thank Ponch for getting on the call. Ponch, you guys send me the email address or text me back, brother, uh, your your address so I can send you an RVT hat. 
And then for the, the merch giveaway tonight, for the people that are still here, appreciate you watching. If you want to get a an RVT hat, just like his, it's like the white, the white, it's a trucker's hat with the white, the white uh, mesh backing. You want one of those hats. When the live stream is over, when this is over, you put in the comments what you think your toughest thing to get by with Leo's out here is going to be. Okay. If you're a Leo, what's your toughest thing getting by drivers is going to be? Put put down in the comments your 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 most concerning interaction you imagine in your mind or whatever's happened to you in the past. I'll do I'll do a, a giveaway. I'll, I'll pick one of those comments on the next video and I'll give you a hat. Whoever wins this that part of it, I'm going to send Poncha a hat for doing this tonight. No notice. And then after the video is done, put in the comments your most conflicted encounter with the police officer or or with the cdl driver or what you think is going to be the most conflicted encounter put it in the comments of the video once it once the video is done Ponch, you have anything else you want to add brother you've been so polite and so friendly to jump on this call thank you so much no nothing at all and you know and don't be afraid you know um to get into this career also like you said even if my you know i come from a, a family of felons back in ohio so right there it doesn't matter if you're straightening your life out and you're getting it back on track keep on that track don't have hatred towards the cops just keep on that straight track we we'll treat you with respect you treat us with respect everything's good yeah and punch again i appreciate you making the time tonight red viking trucker nation thank you for punch thank you for the the wolverine thank you hold on, let me give you a shout out to the beagle in the back behind us red viking trucker punch and the wolverine and the beagle we are out of here